Okay. We got some technical difficulties down there in New Mexico. Look at you guys wear little brown scapulars. I love this one. Speaking of Mexico, although it was in Mexico, Mexico, not New Mexico. This is where I got this one from a little Carmelite order down there. All right. I am not sure if you can see me, you can hear me. Am I live? Oh, so you can see me. Etsy said, yes, you can see me. So I'm just going to give it a couple minutes. If there's anybody else out there. Okay. Now I'm getting a yes there too. Okay. You can see me. I hope that means that you can hear me as well. And this time I'm going to be kind of like up and down with my glasses. I hope that it's not um, too reflective with the lights that I have. I'll try to keep my head down. Um, okay. Let's talk first about the levels of prayer. Because many of us struggle just to get to level two. But our beautiful, beautiful Saint Teresa of Avila says that our prayer is supposed to be supernatural and spiritual and emotional and completely out of this world. I mean, we're all called to be saints. We're all called to have that intimate, perfect union with God here on earth. And you don't have to be a religious person to achieve it. Now, I'm not talking as if I'm there. <laughs> I haven't levitated. I haven't, you know, taken beautiful trips with God across heavens and all of that into the cosmos. That's, that's not where I'm at. But I'm slowly but surely loving prayer. And God is calling me to prayer with him. And when I don't and I let this world get in the way, Everything is shaken up. Everything is more anxious. Everything is not always peaceful. And I might snap at someone. But when I start my day, it is so amazing. If you follow me on my YouTube channel, just search Kendra Von Esch. In there is an hour-long interview with Dan Burke. Spiritual direction, an awesome man. Used to be the... Um, Chief um, Operating Officer of EWTN News. He's phenomenal, a good friend. And we were talking about discerning spirits um, as well as mental prayer and how important it is to incorporate mental prayer into your day every day. And we talked about starting your day in prayer. And I know some people have crazy lives, some people work different shifts, different hours, and some of you are like, yeah, I just can't do it. I'm not a morning person, so to speak. Look, I'm not a morning person or a night person. I just love my sleep. <laughs> so I take it whenever I can get it. But, but there are beautiful graces, and it's all over the Bible about getting up before the dawn, before the day breaks, that's the darkest part of the, of the morning before day breaks. If you go to the book of wisdom, when the manna came down from heaven, they all came out and gathered it before the sun rose. Sorry, for the sun rose, rise. I don't know which one it is. And when they did that, they were able to eat it and, and put it into their lives. But once the sun came up, it all disappeared. So there are beautiful graces that come from morning prayer before the day breaks. So if you are watching this and you're questioning, hmm, I don't start my day that way. I don't know how to start my day any other way. I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm making a lunch for my husband and coffee and sending him on his way. Praise be to God. He's got a, he's got a career and he's able to support us. And then I go up, I light my blessed candle, my exercise blessed candle, mind you, and I grab my exorcist blessed crucifix and my blessed rosary, and I open up the shades, it's still dark outside, and I begin. You, it's really important to prepare for prayer. 
too often we just jump right on in and it's <laughs> it's super hard to calm your voice or to pray the rosary in a meditative way while you're doing other things and I'm guilty of that it's not like I do it it's not a bad thing I'd rather pray my rosary and check the box than not pray it that day so I know there's a lot of people who try to squeeze in prayer but what I'm really trying to get at here is to start your day in some true mental prayer. I always pray using the readings, the daily readings, and I always do it in the morning because I am set enveloped with God. I have him wrapped around me. I call on Mary and all the saints, the holy angels, my guardian angel I pray to every morning to protect me, inspire me, and lead me. The guardian angels of ours are there to encourage us and to inspire us and also to provide messages to us just like the Holy Spirit. So it's very important to take preparation and to find a place to pray. So Dan Burke and I talked about morning prayer and he agreed with me a hundred percent that it's so important to start your day that way. And he shared a story about a friend of his who I believe was a deacon and who said, I pray at night. And he said, you should really try to pray. And they went through this, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the deacon called him up, I don't know, one time after a week of him praying in the morning, saying, oh my, what a difference my day is starting in prayer and bringing God into my life. And I just get out there with, with this joy and this peace and this love to be the light to other people rather than live my whole day, pray at night and then go to bed. So think about that. And if you're also looking and considering making that commitment, I just want to prepare you for the fact that every excuse in the book if you're not a morning person and you don't currently pray or you want to get up an hour earlier or a half an hour earlier, you're going to have every excuse in the book not to get up from two areas, from your own bodily desires and from evil. Evil does not want you taking one step closer to your relationship with God, period. And we'll put in every excuse in the book and you will sit there in bed and you will debate with the excuses. Oh, it's too cold or I didn't get much sleep last night. I could pray later. I don't feel like it. Mm hmm. And that, my dear friends, is discernment of the spirits, Ignatian spirituality. Rule number five. Rule number five, which means you, this, the moment you choose to go deeper in your relationship with God, you will be discouraged. And every excuse in the book will come up. So what do you do? You do it anyway. You pull those covers off. You don't even entertain the thoughts. Pull the covers off. Put your feet on the ground. Get up. Go make your coffee or tea or hot lemon water or juice. Whatever it is that you, you know, have routinely in the morning. And just do it. And by the way, do even more than what you were planning on doing. So if you're planning on a rosary, do a rosary and a decade. If you were reading the scriptures and you plan to sit in meditation or Christian meditation, mental prayer for 20, 25 minutes, do it for 30. This is how we fight back. And we also fight back with deliverance prayers, which is in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the spirit of laziness. I renounce the spirit of sloth. I renounce the spirit of temptation, temptation to sleep, you know? And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence. Then make it meritorious. It's a sacrifice. You want to stay in bed. I mean, come on, let's face it. Who doesn't want to sleep that extra 15, 30 minutes or an hour, whatever your commitment is? But we probably won't. We'll probably lay there and maybe feel guilty that we didn't get up and right it's going to be that like mind game with us that's where we can take this sacrifice when we choose to love god 
and get out of bed, we can be in intercessory prayer. We can make it meritorious. So Lord, I take this sacrifice of getting out of bed because I don't want to. I align it to you on the cross and I ask you to bring your light and awaken those who are asleep in this world who don't know you Lord who don't have a relationship with you who don't pray so you do three things you do it anyway and you make it a little bit longer you renounce the spirits that are fighting the temptation for you not to do it and then you intercessory pray for somebody else even if you don't know them you can make it for people that you do know I'm offering this sacrifice up for my husband to come back to the church for my child and their drug addiction we have so many ways that we can use these little sacrifices in our lives to apply them intercessory prayer for our friends and family and even those we don't know for evil for those enemies that are out there attacking our freedoms and our livelihoods and our faith and us make sure you have a place to pray your Christ corner your prayer place your spiritual sanctuary anything that when you get there you know this is not the time for emails. This is not the time for social media. Put your smartphone somewhere else. This is a time for me to love God. And then you start by putting yourself in his presence. And you humbly ask, as the catechism says in the very beginning, because prayer is a gift. And humility is the root of all and the base, the basis of all virtues. Lord, I don't know how to pray as I ought. I really don't. So I really need your help. Could you help me and love me through this time with you? Help keep out the distractions and my mind from wandering? Because I am in your presence. This is where I bring up my imagination. I try to see Jesus sitting in front of me. I try to see the Father in this beautiful overarching, I'm sure you've seen a couple pictures where he's there, but he spreads across the picture. And then the Holy Spirit as this visible air around me. And when I take in my deep breaths, I breathe in the Spirit of God. I ask the Father, in Jesus' name, will you please fill me with the Holy Spirit? Fill me with his love and his peace and his calmness. Fill me with his voice and his messages. Prepare yourself then by calling on the heavens. I don't just call on God in these moments. I then reach out to Mary. I do the left hand with Mary, which is probably the right one that you're seeing, and my right hand with the Holy Spirit. I ask, Mary, please take my hand. Please wrap me in your mantle and protect me and guide me to your son and his sacred heart. Holy Spirit, with your beloved spouse, Mary, Please help me pray. Help me hear your voice. Help me live in your will. And then I ask St. Joseph, and I highly recommend if you have not consecrated yourself to St. Joseph, get Father Calloway's book. It's amazing. I had a massive spiritual experience with that. And I look at St. Joseph so differently now. So I ask St. Joseph, as my spiritual father, my daddy, will you please join in this prayer? Will you please also be the terror of demons and protect any outside forces from coming in to distract me, to lie to me, to pull me away from you, Lord? Thank you, St. Joseph. 
And then I call on specific saints and they change all the time. I am blessed to have my confirmation saint as the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux. And I look at her and I think, talk, talk about humility, all the little things done in love. And that's what prayer is. We're supposed to be loving God, praying and talking to him from our hearts. And so I call on her and I call on all the other saints that come to mind. I don't have a memorized list. I really try to make every morning unique because every day is such a gift and it's so different. And every day can be a massive spiritual experience and a walk with God like we've never known. And I don't want to check off a box. My morning prayer does not have my rosary in it. I do not pray vocal prayer in the morning. What I do is I put myself, I prepare myself for prayer by calling on all the heavens. So I call on the saints and then I ask the rest of the holy saints to join me. And then I call on my guardian angel to lead me and inspire me and to send me any information that I need to know and also to protect me. And then I call on all the other holy angels and saints. Sometimes I specifically call for St. Michael. You know, I mean, I just call on the holy heavens to help me. And then I sit, be in silence. Put yourself, visually try to picture all of the heavens hanging around you. We're ready. We're all here. And they're all going to pray. They're, they are doing intercessory prayer for me. Because I'm asking them to come join me and to come pray with me. So intercessory prayer is very integrated into our relationship with God and all the holy angels and saints and our guardian angel, we ask them all the time to pray for us. Okay, then I start my reading. And, and throughout, by the way, as you're being distracted and all of that, please deliver the spirits and pull yourself back into the presence of God. It's very important to know that when you're taking this time for mental prayer and quiet solitude with God, that even if all you do is pull yourself back, oh, I got to do the laundry, oh, I got to, you know, don't forget to put milk on the list, and oh my gosh, and you start, you get even sidetracked. There are mornings that I just grab my phone without even thinking about it, and I start flipping, and I'm thinking, what am I doing? I'm in the middle of prayer. You know, I'll put the phone down, and I'll, I'll pull myself back, and I'll visualize God in front of me, and all the angels and the saints around me, and I'll try to start again. <laughs> Please know that not every day will be beautiful. Some days are going to be brutal. And we are going to be like this till we pass. Till our last day on earth. We're going to struggle with distractions and things that are fighting for our attention with God. So have some patience with yourself. And be persistent. Hello, we heard the readings. Father Leo nailed it, right? Persistence, persistence, persistence in our petitions, but also in our desire to love God and to spend that time with him, no matter whether we feel like it or not, because love is a choice, not a feeling. Okay, so then I will get into um, the readings. I know I was going somewhere else, but I lost that track of thought. I'll go into the readings and I will open my mind. Some people pray Lexio Divina where they start putting themselves in the scenes and they can feel the air and the sand if it's in the desert or something. And, you know, they try to see, put themselves into a character, whether it be Jesus or a bystander. Um, I do that on occasion, but most often I read through the readings. I try to read them slowly. And then I'll go back through them again. And sometimes a word will pop out or a, a, a verse will pop out or even a theme for the entire day's reading. There may be a theme that I'm gathering God speaking to me about. So one day, while I was trying and fighting my daily prayer life, it was hard when I first started in the beginning. 
it was a struggle and I wasn't getting anything out of it, right? A lot of people say, well, when I pray, I don't get anything out of it. Just keep going, keep praying. And by the way, don't expect anything out of it. You might be pleasantly surprised when God gives you that beautiful grace. So I was, um, at this time, I was praying and then I, you know, one day I would do it, the next day I wouldn't, and then another day I would, and then I'd skip two days. And so there I was reading the daily readings and boom, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And the word daily jumped off of the page and slapped me in the face. Just the word daily. And so that was my clue that I better sit with the word daily here. (laughs) And I heard God clearly say, you got to do this every day. It's a daily spiritual battle. You are fighting temptations and you are fighting evil and you are fighting to be virtuous every single day. And I want to love you every day. I want to spend, to kick off your day with you. I want you to talk to me all day. It was kind of a daily day thing. And I started crying. It was so beautiful. I try to take off my glasses. I see it's starting to get a little reflection from the lights. It was so beautiful that I was so blessed. Even in the middle of me struggling on praying, with praying, committing to prayer, I just knew this is how it's got to be. It's got to be every day with God, and it's got to be all day with God. So I want to talk a little bit about the nine levels of prayer, because the more you pray and the more you persist in prayer, the more God is going to pull you to his heart, the less difficult it's going to be. Ah, I remembered what I was going to say. So even if your prayer is all these distractions the whole time, And you walk out of there going, well, what was that? Sorry, God. Don't worry. Because you persisted and because you continued to pull yourself back into the presence of God, St. Francis of DeSales says, your prayer was beautiful to God. It counts. Now, alternatively, if you choose to go look at that phone and scroll through things and go back into something or you you choose you know what i'm not into it i can't pray i'm gonna go put my grocery list together or i'm gonna go do that laundry that just popped into my head and you blow off your prayer and you decide not to spend that time with god that's a sin don't choose the worst path choose the better part sit with Mary at Jesus' feet, choose to spend that time with him because we are called to. We're called to worship the Lord. Remember, two greatest commandments. You can't do number two unless you do number one. And that's loving thy God. And that's worshiping him and thanking him. So that was a beautiful, out of the, you know, blue thing with one word the day daily I need to be with you all day all day you can't do this without me every day oh and by the way there was also in the moment in this day not tomorrow not yesterday I'm right here right now with you okay sorry I had to get that out there with St. Francis de Sales because it it really helped me not give up I mean, if we just choose to walk away and say, well, I'm not feeling it. I don't really want to pray today. That's, that's a sin. That's a, that's, a, that's a whack against Jesus on the cross. Let's try to remember that one. Okay, the nine levels of prayer. I'm not going to get into all of them because, quite frankly, most of us are stuck in, like, level one and two. So I mentioned it in the earlier talk about vocal prayer and mental prayer. And mental prayer is Christian meditation. And it has to be a minimum of 15 minutes. But I call baloney on that because 15 minutes, I told you, you've got to even prepare for prayer and put yourself in the moment to open your heart and bring God and the whole heavenly army around you as you're meditating on whatever you're meditating on. I mentioned that I meditate on scripture every day, the daily readings, because I believe the daily readings are there for a reason. 
and I always, always get talked to in the readings. There is a message and a resolution and a conclusion that I take away from my mental prayer through the readings. There's no question. Now, you could also meditate on the crucifix. You can make the rosary a meditation if you truly focus and you, you know, you wrap your mind around the mysteries. That's beautiful. You can meditate on verses of saint books. There's, there's many things that you could meditate on. And when you're praying, make sure you have something that you can pull yourself back to. So I had mentioned I, you know, I visually put around me the, you know, the Father, the Son, the saints, the angels. But I also have my crucifix and my rosary in my hand. And sometimes this doesn't work for me. So I go back and I focus on the physical object in my hand. And usually looking at Jesus on the cross does it. <laughs> Jesus, you died for me. You suffered so much and I don't have the patience to pray. I don't have the patience to sit here and love you. Yeah. Okay. So the nine levels of prayer, this is from St. Teresa of Avila, nine levels and also St. Alphonsus Liguori is another beautiful saint that I gather a lot from. Purgative way, the illuminative way, and the unitive way. And nine go in. So the first one is purgative, purgative way. And there's four in that particular group. Vocal prayer, mental prayer, effective prayer, and acquired prayer. And then the illu and then there's this um, dark night of the senses. That's a, a moment that you have in between the next level, which is the illuminative way, and that has two, which is infused contemplation and prayer of quiet, and then the dark night of the soul comes in between there, and you go to the next level, unitive way, which is simple union, three of them are in there, Simple union, conforming union, and transforming union. So, I just want to talk about mental prayer again, number two, and why we need to pray mental prayer. Oh, by the way, before we get into that, this is a free download that's going to be put in the links for you. It's a Master Your Mind Retreat. And it talks about how we block God's graces, what mental prayer is, why we need to pray mental prayer. But the big thing is on the back page, there are links to so many resources. And one of them down at the bottom, second to the bottom, is the nine levels of prayer. So you can research those and check them out yourself. But this is jam packed with goodies. Because guess what? We're all called to be saints. And every single saint prayed mental prayer. And every single saint struggled with it. And we are called to pray mental prayer, but there's some really good things about when we incorporate it every single day. I mean, it's a daily commitment. It's a daily walk. And by the way, if you don't pray mental prayer every single day, and I'm beating that drum because it's very important, St. Teresa of Avila says it's the gateway to all of the other seven levels. I don't know about you, but I think it would be so incredible to have this way off the chart, supernatural levitation. And I mean, St. Teresa of Avila was like floating up in the church. St. John on the cross was like holding her feet down. How awesome would that be? Wow. So yeah, I can spend, I do an hour. I can spend an hour with God and it starts my day in a way that is amazing. And I am able to love people and then I remember God and I thank God all day because I spent that time with him in the morning. And if you do not incorporate mental prayer into your life every single day for a minimum of 15 minutes, you cannot stop 
sinning. That is St. Alphonsus Liguori telling you that one. But if you do, St. Teresa of Avila says that the devil knows he has lost your soul, meaning he can't pull you down. This is important. It's important because of the two greatest commandments that we need to love and worship God, but it's also important for our souls because we need to fight the daily spiritual battle and to be virtuous and to continue to walk that narrow path and not fall into temptation. And we need God to help us throughout that. But we all want to hear God's voice in our lives. And that's where mental prayer comes into play. Because it's not just reflecting on something just to reflect on something. We're supposed to get a resolution out of that prayer that day. And I have had specific things come to me. One was, call your mom. <laughs> that had nothing to do with the scripture that I was reading for that day. But I heard, call your mom, call your mom, call your mom all throughout my meditation. So I went to daily mass and when I was done, by the way, I was sitting there praying and it was again, call your mom. And so afterward in the narthex, I picked up my phone and I called my mom. Got 10 minutes. I need to probably offer up some questions to you. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them in the comments. I'll just continue with this. So I called my mom. And she talked me off the ledge. I was dealing with something that was going on in my, in my life. Um, you know, I'll, I'll confess it to you. I, I left a very lucrative, well-paying job. And my husband, who's not practicing, I was the breadwinner, was not too thrilled about this change, uh, but supported me with love. And I was eating myself up for the first year of my ministry like I need to make money I need to make money I need to make money and I was constantly anxious and worried about it I have since by the grace of God completely detached from the dollar and from money that this has nothing to do with that at all and if my husband wants to leave me because I'm not making any that's fine too it is not about me. It's about me sharing my life with others and helping others deepen their relationship with God and taking advantage of this beautiful, sacramental, grace-filled church that we have been given and all of the beautiful resources, you know, all the sacramentals that we have, you know, the scapular and the crucifixes and the miraculous medals which we just celebrated the feast day it's it's about him and it's about attracting others to God through my life through my witness through my learnings I wish I could help hope any of this helps you just a little bit in your struggles with prayer always and everywhere to give you thanks we say that every mass it's right and just it's our duty and our salvation. So that's one of the ways that we can pray incessantly all day. And for intercessory prayer, we can thank the Lord for those in our lives and then add a prayer of petition. Thank you, Lord, for having my mom and dad still in my life. And I pray for their health and wellness. Thank you for my supportive husband I couldn't do this without his support. And Lord, I pray that you touch his soul every morning. Mm, every and always are hard words. Almost every morning. I pray to my husband's guardian angel to encourage him and inspire him. And I pray to the Holy Spirit to ignite him on fire for God. He's on a journey. He's my mirror. <laughs> Sometimes he looks at me, he's like, well, that wasn't very Jesus-like. You know, and I'm like, who are you? I, I love it, though. I mean, I am so blessed to have him in my life, and I thank God for him always. 
And intercessory prayer can be thanking the Lord for those in our lives and then adding a petition. And I didn't, you know, intercessory prayer is is so beautiful and there's power behind it. When you think about, talk about Dan Burke, again, if you know him, he had COVID, he was in the hospital and his beautiful wife, Stephanie, put this, you know, big request for prayers out on Facebook and all the social media and think about how many people were praying for him. And he's, he's pretty sick. He's got some pretty serious, you know, lung and asthma issues. And he was in the ICU. It was not looking good. But when you, in your heart, pray selflessly and humbly, I always pray only if it's your will. Because sometimes we could pray for others and we get a little like, come on, God, are you going to answer this one or what? And yes, he always answers our prayers with yes, yes, but not right now, or no. And sometimes we don't get those really deep, heart-wrenching prayers answered. That illness takes someone's life or someone dies suddenly. But there is always a greater good that happens from those tragic situations. Maybe you, over a parent who passed away, have mended your relationship with your siblings. Or it brought your family closer. My stepchildren's mother passed away three, four years ago. Out of the blue, it was a big shock. And then the kids moved in with us at 20 and 23, and they brought their two dogs, and we had a dog. We had like instant family, and it was crazy. And we were still in this mournful, sorrowful stage. Now I look and I say, what a blessing that was. Yes, we still miss her dearly. She was awesome. I love that woman. But I look and I say, if that didn't happen, my husband and I wouldn't be as close with his kids as we are. They wouldn't have seen a regular permanent father figure in their family, teaching them little projects around the house. And they happened to be in my life when I left my career. I'm sure they were looking at me like, why would you do that? You know, like a lot of people strive to be an executive in business. And I'm walking away because that ain't where the happiness is. That's not where my soul is. I have to look at Jesus when I die. And I need to bring as many people to him as I possibly can. And I need to share with the world. That what the world tells you makes you happy, like I believe for 42 years of my life, doesn't. There's true peace, true transformation, true love and joy, and it's only from God and the beautiful sacramental graces of the Catholic Church. And they got to watch me move my life down the spiritual path. We had many faith-filled conversations. They were raised in the Lutheran Church. We had many moral conversations. It was beautiful. So even though our lives are, I should say, our our prayers may not be answered the way that we want them to be answered for other people, know that it's for the better somehow. We just may not see it right now. So add fasting and sacrifices, as I mentioned earlier, you're trying to have that child quit those drugs or come back to the church or you want your you know estranged spouse to come back or anything whatever it is right it could be an illness whatever your deepest hardest prayers and desires are add fasting and sacrifice and offer them up to God for them specifically and I've been told that you can offer those up even though you forget. I'm, I'm bad at sac- doing a quick sacrifice and then remembering to offer it to God and praying also for somebody else, intercessing for someone. But you can, re- when you remember, go back and pray, right? God is out of space and time. It's not wasted. Just offer it up for that person and continue 
continue, persevere, just like today. That woman finally got the judge to, to rightfully, rightfully answer her prayers. And that's what God always does, even though at the time we may not understand it and might think it's the wrong decision, it's always his will, not ours. And keep praying for those in purgatory who have passed, for their souls to be brought into heaven and for God's mercy. I truly believe he is merciful, especially with all of the people and the prayers that fall and capture around that person. Okay, I don't think I see any questions. I'm going to hang here in case you have any. But know that your prayers matter. My mom prayed me back to where I am. I know she wasn't praying me to come to the church because she wasn't in the church. By the way, she is now. And she followed my lead and went to confession after 50 years because she saw what God has done in my life. And I also want to say that there's another freebie that will be sent out to you or put in, in a link, which is Need a Miracle Now. This is for anyone who is struggling with financial issues, addictions, um, illness in a family, death in a family, or they're just struggling with fear, worry, and anxiety. All of these prayers have either worked for me or I've prayed for for others. There's been for illness and for financial issues. These were prayers that I use for other people. It also has Bible verses and saints that you can pray to as well for their intercession. Such a beautiful gift we have to pray to the holy angels and the saints. Let's not forget to ask others to also pray for us. And then in the back, there's this beautiful, uh, um, it's in the back. I can't hold it up and do that at the same time. Um, surrender prayer to Jesus. It's a nine day novena and it is beautiful. And I think everyone who's struggling with something or praying for somebody else and it's not coming to fruition, that prayer is for you. I know many of you are familiar with it, but it is such a beautiful, beautiful prayer. And I wanted to put it in there. There's a couple extra bonus ones in there too. So I am going to, oh, so don't go anywhere. Wait a couple of minutes for the praise and worship. And just in case, I am going to add, I think I have, I don't think I can. Thought I could add a comment here. Oh wait. All right, I'm just looking. I'm. I finally got to the comments here. So let me see if there are any. Hold on. Bear with me. Okay, no comments, but I will leave links to those two free books, and I know Patsy will probably send them to you in an email. It's just Kendra Von Esch, which is my website need a miracle now with dashes in between or master your mind okay so it has been awesome this has been crazy i wish i could see your faces and i wish i could meet all you in person I just want to say thank you for having me. It's been an honor. Thank you, all of you courageous women in Christ. We need each other. We are not meant to walk on the journey alone. And if you go to my website, KendraVonEsch.com, I have a daily podcast. It's um, every morning, Monday through Friday. I come live um, 
early in the morning, probably seven, eight, somewhere between seven and eight central time for 10 minutes. And we just put Jesus on together. Sometimes I'm not having such a good day and I tell you, okay, this is what's going on and this is how I got out of it. And it's always based after my prayer, after my morning prayer time. And sometimes I pull in the readings. So if you want to walk with someone a little bit every day, I'm your girl, I'm your gal if you liked this. And definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel so that anytime the videos come out, you can walk with me that way as well. I really try to get out on social as much as possible because I was alone on most of my journey and I felt like I was just by myself. None of my friends, family, spouse, kids, none of that. Nobody was on the journey. And so it was just me and my computer. So I'm really trying to be that regularly for people and share the journey, you know? I mean, I came from like almost anti-God, even though I believe God existed, certainly <laughs> kind of anti-Catholicism. And now I can't speak enough about it. So God can do miracles in your life too. So stay on for some praise and worship. God bless you all. I will keep you in my prayers. I remember in the beginning of my journey, I wasn't so good at that. But yes, everyone that I say that sees me on a video or has read any of my stuff or has caught any of my posts, I pray for. So just know you're always in my prayers because I pray for you every day. I love you. Oh, okay. Now I want to ask you if you could just pray for me. You could practice intercessory prayer. Uh, after this, I'm going on a little silent retreat in my own house and I'm going to focus on God. I think um, there's so much going on in this world. I'm disconnecting and it's going to be a couple of days, although I will do my daily podcast on Monday. I am just going to be silent and really love God and reconnect. And I hope that you guys spend some time. You've already done that by spending some time on this today. Um, can do that as well. Uh, it's so important. And we're not, we're so busy. Even if you have to get in your car and go drive into a parking lot somewhere, <laughs> just do it. Just do it and spend an hour in silence loving God. Especially if you don't have churches or anything like, you know, a chapel open. Okay, now I'm done. Thank you so much for all of your patience, your love, and I hope to see you somewhere online or even in person one day when we get back into that very soon. God bless you all. Have a blessed day.